Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. Now this video is called, This Shows Why the King James Bible is the Purest Word of God. It's not as if any extra proof is needed. You shouldn't need any really, as you just have to look at history and how the powers that be have for the last 400 years try to destroy the King James, have gone to incredible lengths to ban it, etc, etc, as I was talking about in the last video. It's, it's the response to it. That's how you tell. It's a bit like how you, if you look at the alternative media CO network of deceivers online, how they are all linked to each other, and you can get an idea of what's going on or what is not going on from what they uniformly push. What was it last week? The April the 8th eclipse, sun, rapture, fear propaganda, nonsense. Just, just wasting your time. Just keeping you busy, keeping you entertained with nonsense. Keeping you talking about stuff you don't need to so that their audiences don't climb to the next level up. Keeping them bound to this world of silly gossip that doesn't really mean anything or will make any difference. Okay, look, I'm rambling. Let me get this video done. So I don't need any proof of the King James Bible being the pure word of God. I know it is in my heart, but this is interesting. Now, you are probably familiar with this verse from Psalm 12, 6, 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now, if you look at the context of the Psalm 12, it's talking about how man should not put his trust in the words of other men and that the words of the Lord are pure. And the important bit here is the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, and that the words will be preserved forever, for every generation, it says. So let's focus on that bit first. The words are so pure, they are silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. When you're purifying silver, you are refining it, yeah? You're taking out the stuff that is not so good, so you end up with something more pure, more pure silver. It's slowly uh, improving it, refining it over time. Now in this verse, it says the words of the Lord are pure as silver tried in a furnace, purified seven times. So why does it say the words are purified seven times? We know that in scripture, seven often symbolizes completion or perfection. It's God's perfect number. Genesis tells us that God created the heavens and the earth in six days and upon completion, God rested on the seventh day. Number seven, is, it's all over the scriptures. In this case, I believe it's talking about the King James Bible. As the King James Bible was the seventh English translation, there were six English translations before the King James. The King James was the seventh. And all of those six English translations before it were the refining process leading up to the King James. And it had to keep going until they reached the pure seventh English translation and that was the King James Bible. The Bibles were these, 1525, the Tyndale Bible, 1535, Coverdale Bible, 1537, Matthew Bible, 1539, Great Bible, 1560, Geneva Bible, and 1568, Bishop's Bible, okay? Now, you will get people that will say, oh, no, 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 that's wrong. There were more English Bibles than that before the King James. Well, yes, there are other ones, but they don't count. They are omitted from this list because they were not translated from the original language of Greek and Hebrew, okay? You had the Wycliffe Bible and, say, the Dewey uh, Rhymes, Dewey Reims Bible and a number of other ones, but they were all translated from the Latin Catholic Roman Empire version, the Vulgate, which is nonsense, created to reinforce the Roman Empire unbiblical practices. So if we look at the English Bibles that are translated from the original source, it comes down to these six, making the King James the seventh. Yeah, and to re reinforce that, this is the original translators of the King James. They quoted these exact six books when it was released in 1611. They quoted these six books and how they were of great use in the translation 
of the King James Bible, which was released at the same time as the King James Bible in something called the Rules to be Observed in the Translation of the Bible. You can find this online. They stated that they used these six Bibles to help them translate the seventh English translation, the King James Bible. So let's look at that verse again. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. So the purifying of the pure words of God had to go through a refining, a purifying process of seven times to make them as pure as possible. And the King James was the final one, the completion of the purifying stage. So as the six books came out, they each used one another as inspiration to refine the word, ending with the best version, the completed version, that being the King James. This is the word of God. And it's telling you right here in scripture, pointing to the King James. And then of course it ends with, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And it has, because here I am talking about the King James now, 400 plus years later, even though the Roman Empire has done everything it can to try and destroy it, to erase it, to undermine it in that time, with their strategy now being to overload the market with hundreds and hundreds of modern translations, corrupted, altered Bibles, flooding the market with corrupted versions. So if someone, you know, not really in the know is looking for the pure word of God, it's hard to find in a market full of hundreds of other versions. And interestingly enough, if you look at nearly all the modern translations, they have altered the meaning of this specific verse, Psalms 12.6. They all try to make it sound or change it to being that it's about people and not about the pure words of God, right? Even though it clearly is, I mean, you will even have Bible scholars going on and making ridiculously convoluted arguments to try and make it seem like it's about people. Well, it's not. And they're doing that for a reason. It's called deception. I mean, you should check it out if you get a chance. Compare the different modern versions to the King James and you'll see what I mean. As I've pointed out before, when you see all the modern translations changing something in a verse like this, it's because they are trying to hide something. And in this case, they are trying to hide that this is about the King James Bible and that it is the pure word. And there's more. There is also the King James, the King James Bible itself went through seven versions which some claim to be an additional purification process as stated in scripture. So just as there are seven recognized purifications of the English translation of the Bible, ending with the King James, so there are then also, after that, seven major editions of the King James Bible, which are in a succession of, you could say, purification or refinement. So you had the 1611, a second 1611, which fixed a number of typographical errors. Then there was a third version, a 1613 edition, which further fixed some other typographic errors that were not seen in the first two versions. Then you had a fourth version, which was the 1629, a Cambridge University Press, which used a much more uh, a typeset accurate text, it says here. So again, you know, it's refining what was already, you know, good but just slightly improving it. The fifth edition, 1638, still made some slight corrections here and there. And then a six, 1769 edition. And then the final seventh year was the 1900 Cambridge Pure Edition, which is said to be the seventh purification of it. So some claim that this is also another example of the pure words of God being purified seven times as it details in scripture. You know, the differences between the versions of the King James Bible are small, so I wouldn't concern yourself too much, uh, you know, with which one it is. But, it, but it's interesting, right? So anyway, uh, just to sum up, right, the King James Bible is the culmination of the six Bibles that led up to it. Those six translated Bibles were all translated from the original Hebrew and Greek, or what they call Textus Receptus. There are other English Bibles at the time, but they were translated from the Latin Catholic Vulgate. So not the original source. So the King James was the culmination of those six Bibles. It is the culmination of almost a hundred years of scholarship and sacrifice that gave us our English Bible. That is why the six earlier trans 
translations eventually went out of print and the King James Bible became the standard English Bible at the time. It's because the King James was the best one because it went through a refining process, a purification process, which was foretold in scripture. As you can see, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And it has been preserved for the last 400 years. It was purified for that particular time, for it to happen at that specific time, a time when the English language was spoken and used in its most perfect form, a time when uh, printing was just about to become more accessible and easier to produce hundreds of books in a faster turnaround. People go, you know, on about King James. Oh, he was a Freemason. He was gay. He was a devil worshipper. All of this is complete speculation. And it doesn't matter anyway. God uses people, whoever, whatever, to achieve his purpose. If you were God and you wanted your word to get out to the most people in the, in the form of a book, who are you going to use to get it done? You're going to use a very rich and powerful person who had printing presses at their command, who can print hundreds of Bibles in no time. He, ain't gonna, he isn't going to use some Billy Bobbins in a shed, cranking out just one Bible every couple of months. And it had to be at this time, and it had to be this word, because English was going to become the most spoken language in the world, in the future. So everything, everything happens in the time it's supposed to happen. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Okay, thanks for listening. Thank you for your time. Thanks for your support. And I'll see you in the next video. Set you